pretty easy, wasn't it? So how do we measure the diameter of a galaxy? So how big across is the galaxy? So in here in this picture here, we have a galaxy. Basically, what's the D here? And we're going to use an equation that we've kind of used before. D is 2 pi AD over 360. They measure a galaxy's diameter, D, using a standard geometric method, where A is the angular size. We've talked about that before. And uh, D is the distance to the galaxy. Where are you going to get the D? Well, from the methods we've learned before, either from the standard candle method or the Cepheid star method, or by the Hubble law. So, well, let's, well, let's do an example. And I bet you should probably get your calculator out. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay, so we have a galaxy with angular diameter of 0.1 degrees. Okay, all right, so let's write down our equation. Well, the D, okay, the diameter, is equal to 2 pi times AD over 360. Okay, what do we know? Well, A is what? A is the angular size, so that's 0.1 degrees. Okay, and D is the distance to the galaxy. We see 10 megaparsecs. So it's what's well, 10. So this will be equal to 2 times pi times A. A is 0 0.1 times the distance, which is 10, divided by 360. So I'm going to say on the calculator 2 times pi. Now there's a button over here, right over here, that's the pi button. So 2 times pi. I could actually end up with the times. That's not a big deal. Times 0.1 times 10 divided by 360. And I get a big number of, the distance across it is 0 0.017. Now, what is that? Now, since this was measured in megaparsecs, then this will be in megaparsecs, MPC. So the diameter, and I said that's not a tiny number. Well, this is the diameter across a galaxy, all right? how big it is across the galaxy. And though that seems like a small number, for a galaxy that's pretty reasonable because it's many, many mega or thousands of parsecs away. A parsecs, if you don't recall, what is a parsec? If you don't recall, a parsec is equal to 3.26 light years. So this galaxy is, um, you know, 0 0.017 uh, well, that's actually one parsec, and a mega parsec would be a thousand times that. So a mega parsec, mega stands for a thousand. No, kilo is a thousand. So this is a million. So you'd multiply this by a million. So this would be three, one, two, three, four, five, six uh, light years across. This is that's one uh, mega parsecs, and so 0.017 of that. That's a pretty reasonable number. Okay, now, one more thing. It's a big calculation thing here. Let me make the calculator go away. All right, what about the mass of a galaxy? How can we measure the mass of a galaxy? How much mass is in a galaxy? Well, it's determined from uh, a modified form of Kepler's third law. Guess what? We're going to do this in a minute. Well, use this method. One concentrates on some stars or gas on the outer fringes of the galaxy. So we're going to just stare at the outermost stars. And then the semi-major axis distance using Kepler's third law is simply half the galaxy's predetermined diameter. We just did diameter of a galaxy just a minute ago, right? So we're going to presume that they are circles, so then we can find the radius. And from the orbital period used in the third law, we can, in Doppler analysis, we can figure out the orbital speed, and then we can figure out the mass of the galaxy. Now write this down, but let's then, on this next slide, figure out what the equation is. Determine the mass of a star or of a galaxy, pardon me. Well, here is a problem here. We have a rotation speed. So we're measuring the rotation speed. And actually, probably before I do this, I need to give you the equation that determines what is the um, mass of the star equation. And that equation is this. The mass of a, of a galaxy is equal to the square root of the velocity squared times r over g. Now remember g is something we've learned about before, and g is that 6.67, remember 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11th. All right, so we now know um, the speed, that's the v right here, the 300,000, and this is the distance from the center of the galaxy. So this is that uh, distance we calculated previously. Okay, and so let's see here, what do I know here? The mass is... So the velocity is 300,000, so I'm going to say square root, make a big line here, 300,000. When you take 300,000 and you square it, you get a really big number. Times r, which is 3.08, times 10 to the 20th. Okay, and we're going to divide it by 6.67. 
times 10 to the minus 11th. Now, these numbers are just going to be huge. Now, I actually recommend that you do all of this math first and then take the square root. So let's do that. So over on the calculator, I'm going to take 300,000. And here's the square button here, squared, times another number, 3.08 second e 20 divided by 6.67 second double e negative 11. I'm going to get a really, really, really big number. This comes out to be 4.2, uh, we'll say, times 10 to the 41st power. And that is not the right answer, because we need to do what with this? Take the square root of that. And so let's figure out what that is. Now, the cool thing I can do is the square root button on the calculator is right here. So I say second square root. And that, I don't want to retype in my number. So there's a little button down here called the ANS button. So I can say second ANS. Close the parentheses. And that's going to type in 4.159, whatever, E41. And I get this number. And the number I get is 6.4 times 10 to the 20th. And that'll be in kilograms. Now that is a big number. And it makes sense that you'd get a big number for the mass of a galaxy. OK? So that's how you solve that problem. So a lot of math on this podcast, isn't there? Uh, hopefully, there's just basically three big equations. There's this equation, right? And then we got the Hubble's law equation. That's simply V equals HD. And then there was the other equation, which off the top of my head, I don't remember what it is, that helps you find the mass using the CFID variable. That's where the square root of B over G uh, it was B over B is equal to D over D, and you had to have the right thing. So there's a three kind of equations that you're going to have to know to solve these problems. Okay, we'll see you in class. Bye.